So as I mentioned, I want to give you a brief insight into how to actually write for SEO and what firms do to write for SEO. So if you remember, we talked about the fact that you can actually modify different parts of the website page in order to uh, really include SEO content. So I've brought up the ESPN website here. And one of the things you can do with just about any website you want is if you go up to uh, the view section in the Chrome or in many of them and then go to view source and there's almost always a view source and we have to look for where it is. Um, you can pull up the actual uh, source code that actually underlies uh, the website. So this is the actual HTML, right? And so one of the things I mentioned that you can do right away is to include keyword phrases in the description. And if you notice, one of the first things in the HTML is this phrase that says meta name description. Now this is not content that is ever displayed to a actual visitor to the website, but in it, um, ESPN can put in things that they would like Google to know that they're covering. So it says visit ESPN to get up to the minute, sports news, coverage, sports highlights, NFL, MLB, NBA. So for instance, they put in all these other words, they could have put a period right at commentary, that would have been a complete sentence. But by adding all these other things in, they're increasing the likelihood that someone who types in NFL will see the ESPN page. They can also add keywords, which you see down here, right? And these keywords provide additional words that are linked to the page that allow um, uh, ESPN uh, to kind of search engine optimize this aspect of their page. Uh, and other things that you can see later on, for instance, if you look at some of the titles that they use throughout, for instance, they have ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, um, which is also later on. Um, and then their individual pieces of content also have titles that are search engine optimized. So for instance, this is actually within what's called an H1 title, which is one of the heading categories in, in HTML. And here they have Garcia settles for share of lead after Burnery. So if you're looking for um, uh, the golfer Garcia, you could might likely come to this particular page, right? And then uh, they also have subheadings, right? Sergio Garcia lost an opportunity to take the lead on 18 when his putt went just wide, right? And so in many cases here, they have actually different uh, words that are directly what they're trying to search engine optimize. For instance, down here you see H1, the masters, right? Another example related to golf of content that they're probably optimizing almost directly to get in there. Right? So these are all examples of how you can actually add content directly to your website that will affect uh, the search engine optimization of that website. And it's important to work these keyword phrases in whenever you can uh, in order to increase uh, the likelihood that Google correctly identifies your page as being relevant to that particular search term. So here I've illustrated a lot of kind of just fairly basic guidelines for digital copy, many of which we've already talked about, but just summarized in one uh, slide here, right? Um, the copy should embody a creative idea, should be easy to read, the meaning should be very easy to comprehend, and it should convey features and benefits of whatever you're trying to uh, uh, market, essentially. Um, as much as possible, the content should be understandable and a logical structure and should engage with the readers, right? We're, we're using the kind of a content marketing idea to really bring the readers into what's going on. Uh, and the readers should be encouraged as much as possible to actually pause and think about what they're reading. Now, you don't want to do this um, so much that they have to think about it, but that it, but the, but that they can think about it if they, if they want to actually work with the reading and, and understand it a little better. It's it talked about several times, readers don't read text, right? They don't read word to word. They scan the digital text on an online framework. And so they judge a lot of times based upon the layout. If they come to your website and can't quickly figure out how it works, how it's set up, what they should go to next, they will skip on to the next page without even reading a single word just by looking at the way that the page is actually laid out. As a result, copy really needs to be easy to read. Clear, concise headings, bulleted number lists, short paragraphs, bold and italics for emphasis, and descriptive links, right? It should be obvious what's gonna happen when they click on that link. It's another feature that people often screw up is that they don't actually say what that link does, they just have the uh, link there. Language should be as simple and tailored uh, to the uh, uh, audience, right? Should use the tone that you've decided that you're going to use for that brand. Uh, in an active voice, active voices are very engaging, right? You don't want to be always talking about impassive terms. 
Avoid slang and buzzwords unless your brand really need, unless it's a big aspect of your brand, right? To be really on the cutting edge and always using the most important recipes. And you should emphasize, and this is something that's true for all of marketing, right? But especially for digital marketing where you have a short attention span user a lot of times, you should emphasize benefits over the features, right? How will this benefit the, the individual, not what features do they provide, right? So, you know, a classic example people often talk about is like in technology, right? Then in technology, um, you wouldn't talk about the exact pixel resolution of your screen necessarily. You might instead talk about the fact that it has a vibrant display or a vibrant um, uh, uh, colors and images, right? But let's talk about another context that might be a little bit less obvious, right? So features are the actual properties of the product and service, whereas benefits are the positive outcome for the user. So for example, a feature is that you can, that the sporting event has easy parking, right? The benefit of that is that it's a much greater afternoon for the family, right? They don't have to worry as much about parking. People don't go to a sporting event versus something else just because the sporting event has easy parking, right? They go for the sporting event. The easy parking is a feature that they really like about it, right? That makes it a good after experience overall. And so as a result, you really want to emphasize that benefit, not necessarily that feature. Finally, when talking about digital marketing, it's important, and I can't emphasize this enough, to concentrate on the most important content first. Digital readers need to decide quickly if that page is what they need, and the headline should have the most important aspects, right? The summary of the page should be the first thing that they see. I like this page by Basecamp, right? Basecamp is a kind of a project planning page. And above the fold, right, they have Base Basecamp solves the critical problems with every growing business deals with, and then they have the sign up sheet and how to log in right away, right? That's all right there above the phone. And you'll notice just at the line of the fold, it says Basecamp will have you saying things like, this not only is nice, not only because it has the important critical stuff up top, it also engages you to scan by saying, having this sentence that is not filled out um, below, above the fold, right? And then just if you scan back, you see, I've never had a better handle on my business. My team is more self-sufficient, right? You have this content that is very directed at reinforcing the message that this is an important way to help you control disasters and things like that, right? Um, it really helps you control your business and bring it under ranks. So I think this is a good design. It really shows exactly how you should have the most important content first with supplementary content that's engaging later on in the same document.